Let's take a little satellite, tie it to the shuttle with 12 miles of cable, and send it for a spacewalk. It might sound like another crazy plot for a YouTube hit video, but this idea actually belonged to NASA. In 1996, they teamed up with the Italian Space Agency to try one of the boldest, strangest experiments ever attempted in orbit. The mission was called TSS-1R, short for Tethered Satellite System 1R. They came up with a plan to reel a satellite from the Space Shuttle Columbia on a tether that could carry an electric current. As the shuttle zipped around Earth, that long cable would slice through the planet's magnetic field lines. In physics terms, moving a conductor through a magnetic field generates electricity. So, the Space Shuttle Tether Satellite Combo was about to turn into a giant orbital power generator. It was like plugging an extension cord into Earth's invisible magnetism. The physics behind this craziness was rock solid. Engineers hoped this tether would pump out usable power, maybe even thousands of volts. If it worked, it could change how spacecraft get electricity or inspire new ways of breaking in orbit using electrodynamic drag. So, launch day came. Columbia lifted off. The crew prepared the system, and they started letting the satellite out on its long, long cord. At first, it was smooth sailing. The satellite glided away, the tether unreeled like a spool of cosmic fishing line, and the science team was buzzing with excitement. As the line stretched longer, it started generating more and more electricity, over 3,000 volts at its peak. Everything was running perfectly like a dream experiment. And then, just as the tether was almost fully extended, nearly the full 12 miles, things took a dramatic turn. A localized electrical discharge zapped through the tether's insulation. The cable arced and burned a hole right through itself. And with one fatal snap, the tether broke. Just like that, the grand experiment was toast. The crew could only watch as the little satellite, still trailing its dangling wire, floated off into space like a lost balloon on the world's longest string. Years of hard work preparing the experiment just literally drifted away. Visually, it was almost comical. Reporters couldn't resist calling it the goofiest space experiment in history. And honestly, they weren't wrong. It looked less like cutting-edge space technology and more like someone had tied a toy to a string and let it loose above Earth. But, goofy or not, the experiment actually proved the physics worked. Before the failure, the tether really did generate significant electricity, exactly as the scientists predicted. Over 3,000 volts coursed through that cable before it fried. The idea of using conductive tethers for power and propulsion in space wasn't a fantasy. It was all real. The problem wasn't the science, it was the engineering. Space is an unforgiving place, and one small weakness in insulation was enough to take down the whole mission. Even though TSS-1R ended with a literal snap, it left behind valuable data. Engineers learned more about how tether systems behave in orbit, and the concept is still alive today. Researchers keep looking at space tethers for everything from satellite deorbiting systems to futuristic power stations in orbit. So that broken cable might have been a letdown in 1996, but it wasn't the end of the story. If a satellite on a cable isn't wild enough for you, how about two golden orb weaver spiders on the International Space Station? In 2011, NASA sent these two cuties, called Gladys and Esmeralda, up there on Shuttle Endeavour, just to see. Can spiders spin webs in microgravity? Turns out, yes. The experiment lasted 45 days. While floating in orbit, the spiders went ahead and spun webs, but the webs looked shockingly symmetrical, perfect circles, rather than the slightly lopsided webs they usually make on Earth. The spiders, deprived of down and up, used light inside their habitat to orient themselves. On Earth, spiders use gravity to guide how they stretch their legs and spin out their web lines. But in space, with no gravity to rely on, they looked at the lamps and used that as their ground. But that experiment in 2011 wasn't the first space adventure for spider knots. Way back in 1973, 
NASA launched two female European garden spiders called Arabella and Anita into space aboard Skylab 3. The idea of this experiment actually came from a 17-year-old high school student in Massachusetts. The spiders were stashed in little containers and then coaxed into a special tank to spin webs while orbiting Earth. At first, Arabella struggled. She took a while to adapt, and the first web she spun was incomplete. But by the next day, she managed to finish it. Over time, the webs she produced were finer and more delicate than normal Earth versions. And scientists noticed subtle differences in thickness across the threads. But NASA wasn't just curious about spiders for the sake of, you know, spiders. Scientists wanted to figure out how near microgravity messes with the central nervous system. Not just in spiders, but in animals in general, humans included. Spiders actually make the perfect test subjects because their webs are basically brain maps in silk. You can tell how well the spider's nervous system is working just by looking at the shape and quality of the web it spins. On Earth, a spider has a whole toolkit. It knows how heavy it is, so it figures out how thick the silk needs to be. It uses wind and gravity to decide where to anchor and how to stretch the lines. But the way spiders adjusted to build webs in zero-g gave clues about how our own motor systems and brains might behave if we had to live long-term in space. Sadly, Arabella and Anita, the first two spider knots, did their job, spun webs, gave us tons of data, but didn't survive their mission. The likely cause was dehydration. On a brighter note, scientists have grown everything from lettuce to yeast on the ISS. But one of the oddest was trying to see if fungus could shield astronauts from radiation. They took samples of a fungus that thrives in places with high radiation and monitored how it reduced radiation passing through it. Over a thin layer of this fungal, mat, radiation levels dropped by about 2.17% compared to a control sample. At the same time, the fungus had around a 21% growth boost in microgravity. So not only did it block some radiation, it actually seemed to use radiation to fuel itself, almost like a weird fungal solar panel. Now, you might ask, why fungi? Why not steel or lead? Because living things self-repair, self-replicate, and adapt. If you could grow stuff that helps shield you from radiation while it's doing other jobs like repairing and evolving, that's gold for long space missions. The idea is, maybe astronauts could grow part of their radiation shield using organisms instead of hauling tons of heavy shielding materials into space. There was also broader research catalogs on space fungi and microbes. One study in 2019 cataloged all the bacteria and fungi found inside the ISS on walls, equipment, windows, sleep stations, you name it. They found the fungal communities were pretty stable over time. That means fungi are not just surviving, but persisting in that closed, harsh space environment. This science experiment is like a hint that we could have a future where biology and engineering mash together. If we can harness fungi or other organisms as part of a spacecraft structure, we open up a whole new way of designing space habitats. Instead of walls you build once, you could have walls that grow. To make radiation levels Earth-like on Mars, you might need a seven and a half foot thick layer of this fungus covering a habitat. That's huge, but maybe easier than dragging tons of lead through space. There's a lot to figure out about safety, control, dose limits, and how this would work long term. But in the future, astronauts might live behind walls of living mushroom shields, literally harnessing biology to survive the void. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.